If you're considering exercise with oxygen therapy, also known as EWOT, you're probably wondering, is it safe? What are the risks? And who shouldn't use it? These are important questions. EWOT is powerful. It's helped people recover from chronic illness, supercharge their performance, and reverse symptoms they thought were permanent. But like any powerful tool, it's not for everyone. Not all the time. So in this video, we're going to give you a clear, science-backed breakdown of EWA safety and the risks you should be aware of and who we don't recommend it for. Let's get into it. EWA stands for Exercise with Oxygen Therapy. At its core, it's a method of breathing high concentrations of oxygen, 93%, while engaging in physical activity and the effects, they're profound. By delivering more oxygen to your cells during movement, EWOT helps your body repair tissue, detoxify, improve mitochondrial function, reduce inflammation, and restore resilience. People use it for everything from long COVID recovery to anti-aging to athletic training. But here's the catch because EWOT increases oxygen delivery and stimulates your cardiovascular system, lymphatic system, and mitochondria all at once, it's a strong physiological intervention. And that's exactly why people ask, is it safe? The short answer is yes. EWOT is very safe if used correctly. Thousands of people use it daily, including the elderly, people with chronic illness, professional athletes, and biohackers. When you follow the correct protocols and use properly designed system, one that delivers 93% oxygen with adequate flow rate, filtration, and mask seal, EWOT is well tolerated and remarkably low risk. But that doesn't mean zero risk. There are some situations where caution or a conversation with your healthcare provider is 100% necessary. And there are a few groups of people we specifically advise not to use EWOT, at least not right away. Let's walk through those now. There are a few clear cases where EWOT is not recommended unless you're under the direct supervision of a medical professional. Number one, untreated or uncontrolled heart conditions. If you've had a recent heart attack, congestive heart failure, or suffer from uncontrolled arrhythmias, you should not begin EWOT without medical clearance. And the reason is simple. EWOT increases cardiac output. For most people, that's a good thing. But if your heart is compromised and not stable, the added demand can be risky. Number two, severe or unmanaged pulmonary disease. If you have COPD, severe asthma, or pulmonary fibrosis, and you're not already being monitored or treated, for oxygen support, EWOT can overwhelm your respiratory system. Again, this is about current condition. Many people with mild or managed lung issues actually benefit from EWOT in the long run, but it should be introduced gradually and only when your doctor gives you the go ahead for exercise. Number three, active infections with a high fever. EWOT is a metabolic amplifier. If you've got a fever or are fighting off an active infection, flooding your cells with extra oxygen and stimulating circulation and metabolism may accelerate the fever. Not ideal. Wait until you're feeling stable. Number four, uncontrolled high blood pressure. Because EWOT involves exercise, it can increase your systolic blood pressure during sessions. If your blood pressure is chronically high and not managed with lifestyle or medications, this needs to be addressed first. Once your blood pressure is under control, EWOT may actually help long-term, but the initial safety check matters. Number five, if you are unhealthy enough for exercise for any reason, the major sources of risk with EWOT are all related to the risk of exercise. For most folks, exercise is healthy and beneficial. However, if you are not healthy enough to exercise for any other reason, you should not attempt to do EWOT. Even if you're a great candidate for EWOT, you might still feel some short-term side effects when you begin. 
well, these are quite rare, they do happen, especially when people have been very chronically ill for a long time. Let's cover the most common ones and what they mean. Symptom number one, headache or lightheadedness. This is usually due to a detox response or hyperventilation. You're suddenly delivering more oxygen than your body is used to. Sometimes people have a backlog of toxins in their cell. Once the oxygen hits, it can dump all these toxins into the blood and overwhelm your elimination organs. If it happens, stop, rest, and reduce the intensity next time. Start with shorter, less intense sessions and let your body adapt. Symptom number two, fatigue after a session. Believe it or not, this is actually a good sign. It means your cells are doing work, breaking down waste, moving lymph, adjusting metabolism, etc. But it's also a sign to go slow. Recovery is part of the process. Symptom number three, mild flu-like symptoms or nausea. Now this is really rare, but some people experience mild detox reactions. Think of it like stirring up a stagnant pond and stuff starts moving around. If that happens, back off and reintroduce the protocol slowly. Hydration, minerals, and light movement can help flush things out. Okay, before we wrap up, we need to talk about two topics that come up often when people start researching EWOT. Flammability and oxygen toxicity. These are important because oxygen is powerful, but there's also a lot of misunderstanding out there. So let's break them down clearly. First, let's talk about flammability. Oxygen itself is not flammable. It doesn't explode like gasoline or lighter fluid, but it's what's called an accelerant. That means it makes things burn faster and hotter. So if you've got a spark, a flame, or anything combustible, and you add pure oxygen to it, the fire will grow more quickly. So while the oxygen we use in EWAT is not explosive, it does need to be kept away from sources of ignition. Keep your oxygen system away from open flames, gas appliances, lit cigarettes, or anything that can spark. No candles, no stoves, no pilot lights. Of course, if there's a fire in your home large enough to burn through the reservoir, you already have a large safety risk and should be exiting the building. It's not a high risk if you're using it properly, but don't get casual around fire. Respect the gear and you'll be fine. Next, oxygen toxicity. Is this something you need to worry about with EWOT? Now this one's a little more nuanced. Yes, oxygen toxicity is a real thing. It happens in environments where extremely high concentrations of oxygen are consumed continuously for long periods. Think under pressure deep sea diving with an enriched oxygen tank, or being on a ventilator with 100% oxygen for hours. But with EWAT, the risk is essentially non-existent, and here's why. First, our oxygen reservoirs don't contain nearly enough oxygen to create a toxic exposure. Even if you use the entire system without interruption, the dose of oxygen simply isn't high enough or long enough to cause oxygen toxicity. Second, and this is important, EWAT is always done while exercising. And when you move, your body is producing a massive amount of carbon dioxide. CO2 plays a crucial role in oxygen metabolism. It acts as a buffer, helping to regulate how much oxygen is actually absorbed by your tissues. It keeps oxygen from building up in the bloodstream in a way that could be dangerous. So even though you're breathing 93% oxygen during your session, the presence of carbon dioxide from the exercise and the natural respiratory exchange happening during exercise ensures that oxygen doesn't get trapped in the body at a toxic level. Bottom line, oxygen toxicity isn't a concern with EWOT because the physiology of exercise prevents it. And the equipment simply does not provide enough volume or pressure to pose a risk. Still, it's good to ask these questions. Oxygen is a powerful molecule, but when you understand how to use it safely and effectively, it becomes one of the most transformative healing tools you can use. So how do you make sure you're using EWAT safely at home? Here are a few tips to follow. One, follow basic safety. Keep it away from any sources of flames or sparks. 
Two, start slow. Begin with five to 10 minutes of movement while using the oxygen. Build up as your body adapts. This isn't about intensity, it's about consistency. Three, use the right equipment. Not all systems are created equal. You want a medical grade oxygen concentrator, a proper reservoir bag, and a sealed mask that actually ensures you're getting the 93% oxygen, not 70%, not 50%. Number four, listen to your body. Now I know this sounds obvious, but it's easy to ignore. If you feel worse after a session, stop and reassess. Healing is not linear, but you shouldn't feel like you're pushing through pain. Number five, stay hydrated and support detox. Oxygen mobilizes toxins, so make sure you drink water, move your lymph fluids, and consider support like red light therapy or a sauna. Both of them pair beautifully with EWAT. So is it safe? For the vast majority of people, EWAT is remarkably safe. When used properly, it's one of the most effective and efficient tools for healing, recovery, and performance. But it's not a magic button. It's a powerful therapy, and with that power comes responsibility. Know your body, know your limits, and when in doubt, talk to a healthcare provider who can evaluate if you're even healthy enough for exercise. If you've got more questions about EWAT, drop them in the comments. We read every one. And if you're ready to get started but want help choosing the right system or protocol, check the links in the description. We've got guides, resources, and real people ready to help. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.